Welcome to another episode of DD on the Spot. As always, I'm your host, Ryan Johnson. Before I get to our guest here, I'd like to remind everyone, if you enjoy this content, to please give a like and subscribe down below. We greatly appreciate it. We have Katarina Vavolka on the podcast. She's coming to us all the way from Florida. She's an IFBB fitness pro. She also went to the University of Purdue. So boil her up, I'll say that. I'll say it once. I mean, I normally don't say that, especially when they're playing Nebraska, which is my school. But I'll say it just because she's on the podcast. But most importantly, she's our current guest. Katarina, thank you so much for being on the show. Yeah, thanks for having me. Absolutely. So why don't you give us a little bit of a backstory on what inspired you to make that healthy and fit lifestyle change? Sure. I always was interested in health and fitness. I knew since high school that I wanted to do something like a career in that field. So I did all of like the athletic training classes in high school. And then I wanted to do dietetics at Purdue. Um, and I got there and decided I wanted to do athletic training. And they told me no, because um, I was an athlete um, at Purdue. I was a cheerleader. And they said, athletes can't do athletic training. It, you know, there's too much going on. So I decided to pick what was called applied exercise and health. And I did a sports performance concentration. So I worked with the athletes in a different way and did like strength training, agility, speed, stuff like that. And I loved it. And I've been personal training since I got out of school in 2014. That's awesome. So what made you choose Purdue out of all the schools? Yeah. Um, I went, I went and looked at quite a few schools and I just really loved Purdue. It was kind of like that perfect distance from my family, like not too close, not too far. And my grandfather went to Purdue as well. So that kind of pushed it over the edge. Yeah. It's always nice to get that distance. I mean, I only went to school an hour away, so it was one of those things where it wasn't, it was, I mean, just for me, just so I could come back every once in a while, but yeah, it's definitely, definitely nice to have that distance. But when you were in college, how did you sort of find a way to balance, you know, sort of that healthy transition in your life to the fact that you are in college? And I mean, you're going to go out, you're going to have drinks, you're going to have some fun times. Was that a struggle for you at all to sort of find that balance? Um, I think a, a little bit at first. Um, my freshman year, I was, I wasn't a cheerleader yet. I was kind of doing it on my own. We had like a nice they called the Corec, which is our, you know, exercise facility. So it was it was fun to go there, but it was overwhelming with like all the studies and the <laughs> realizing the difference between college and high school and everything that you go through. But I think that once I kind of found cheerleading, I it was easy. You know, we had mandatory practices, mandatory lifts. Anything that I did outside of that was just like for me. And yeah, I enjoyed it. So it wasn't it wasn't hard after that. <laughs> Oh, believe me, I wish when I was going to college that I had something where I, like they would make me get up and go to work out because that would make everything so much easier for me. But yeah, it's one of those things, too, that really, really helps out. But one of the big statements and observations I always love to make, it's one of the things that I found out, too, kind of the hard ways that if you were to walk into a gym with 100 people, I mean, there's 100 different ways as to how each and every individual got into the shape that they're in, whether it comes down to, you know, their diet, their nutrition, how many reps they do, what exercise they do. There's hundreds of little things that adds up to the package that people end up seeing in the gym. Was that hard for you at first to sort of figure out what worked best for your body specifically? Because I always like to say, if you were to go and walk up to someone and say, hey, whatever you did for this body part, I mean, that looks amazing. What do you train for that? What works best for them 99% of the time is not going to work as best for you. For sure. Um, I think while I was in college, my main goal was just to be as strong as possible, but stay like as small as possible. Um, being a flyer and cheerleading, you know, like your weight does make a difference. So, you know, I wanted to be light, but super, super strong for my body weight. And then as soon as I graduated, I was like, let's put some size on. Like, I'm so excited. And literally, I've been working on hypertrophy for like five years straight. And this is all I got. So <laughs> well, I was gonna say even now looking at her, if she was a flyer, that would be a little you'd make things a little bit harder on the people that were trying to carry you. So yeah, yeah I, was, I was gonna say, yeah, she might want to be one of those holders now that the, per, or the people that throw yeah. the girl up in the air. But For yeah, sure. yeah, that's that's so awesome, though. But I always, you know, say too, just making that adaptation. I mean, it's going to take a long, long time because one of the biggest misconceptions that I love to bust on this show. I mean, it affects guys, too, but it affects women, you know, a lot, lot more. But it's gotten better the last five years, I'd say, on Instagram is that. A lot of women still believe that if they just touch one weight, the minute they pick up that, you know, two pound dumbbell, they're just going to magically put on 50 pounds of muscle. And, you know, like I said before we record this, if ever that ever would ever happen, I am paying my entire life savings to that person because they will become my trainer for life because they have found out the secret. 
was that ever a struggle for you that you ever thought of like, Oh, I don't want to get too big. Or was it one of those things too, where you just realize, you know, like that's not going to happen. And you know, being a personal trainer, I bet you have to answer this question, you know, all the time, but what is your response to that? Yeah, I think just because I was going to school for it and had all the background knowledge, I knew how to lift to get strong and not build size. So for me, I kind of knew what I was doing and it wasn't really a struggle. But as a trainer, I absolutely get that all the time. Like, you know, oh, are you sure we should be doing this? Like, I don't want my arms to look big. And I'm like, honey, (laughs) your your arms are not going to look big. Like I have been (laughs) lifting so like literally five years Mm -hmm. to try to get big. So Mm -hmm. I'm still working on it. I mean, I say that all the time. And I always give the example of when I was in college, one of my really good friends, she would always say like, Ryan, you go to the gym, you've gotten a lot bigger and stronger. I want to go to the gym, but I'm just afraid of, I don't want to get like super bulky. And then finally one night I just snapped and I told her, look, the amount of weight that you carry in your purse when we go out to clubs and we go out to, you know, eat weighs more than a lot of the dumbbells in the gym and you're not gaining any (laughs) muscle from lugging that thing around 24 seven. And then that sort of finally convinced her. And she went in. It's just like I say with everything. It's like, just try it and see what happens because what's the worst thing that's going to happen? You're going to get stronger and healthier. I mean, it's 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 absolutely ridiculous, but I do agree. You know, it's just all about, you know, just making sure to let them know that even the Bibers that we have on the show, the amount of hard work that they put into it and the nutrition and all the years that it takes for them to end up looking the way that they look. I mean, they should basically have I should I think for every personal trainer should have a, a little like business card that says how long they've been working out and how long it took them to to get like that because yeah, it is definitely one of those things where it, it takes such a long amount of time. But just to get these people started is is obviously just one of the best things that they can do. And when you were in college, did you decide that you wanted to compete in a bodybuilding show or did that happen after you graduated? No, I didn't even really know about it in college. I found out about it afterward and I kind of thought, <laughs> I'm just going to say it, it kind of sounds bad, but you know, this is kind of like a dog show for mm-hmm. women. Like you put on this like sparkly yep. bikini and heels and like strut out there. And I was like, that's not really for me. But then I found fitness, um, the fitness division and you have the routine. And I was like, I was meant to do this. Like with my background knowledge and all of like the skills and stuff that I've learned through cheerleading. And I did gymnastics for 14 years before that. And I felt like this is something that I could excel at. And I was kind of having that itch to get back out there and start doing something again. And it was, it was a perfect fit. Okay. So now being an ex gymnast, I got to ask, I mean, my girlfriend is a gymnast or was a gymnast and you know, she embarrasses me in pull-ups. That's the one thing that she's got over me. But do you find, (laughs) do you find that that background in gymnastics also help you helped you when it came to bodybuilding? Because, you know, gymnasts are always supposed to have, you know, those nice abs and they're supposed to have like big, strong backs. Do you think that that background and that foundation of just years upon years of gymnastics training really has helped you when it comes into bodybuilding? Yeah, I do. I think that for girls, it's like, the, you know, lats are kind of hard to build up. Um, and I already had that base Mm -hmm. and, you know, people would, or (laughs) it's just like my calves and like forearms and stuff that like, usually it just never comes. I just have that like accidentally just from, you know, gripping and, you know, being on my toes all the time. So, uh, all right, everyone. She's one of those people because I always say I'm one of those people because I'm six foot three. So I'm one of those people that just has small calves. I could do 10,000 calf races every single day. I could do anything. <laughs> I mean, I could literally inject muscle into those calves and nothing would happen. They would still, they would just still be the same. And I, I hate it. And we had one guest because, well, the next question I'm going to ask, but yeah, it, it, I'll, I'll, I'll wait until the next question. So I always got to ask my guest because everyone always has that one body part that just really naturally is just taken off that they don't have to train as much. And they have that one body part that really just lags behind that they really have to sort of work really hard in order for to keep up with everything. What are those body parts for you? Um, I would say that the thing that I feel like I don't really have to work hard on is, is my calves. My legs are pretty developed <laughs> from gymnastics and, and cheerleading, just jumping for like a four hour football game. It results in calf muscle. So <laughs> That's the one thing I feel like I'm the only one in the world, but that one I feel comfortable with. And then pretty much like everything else, I feel like I need (laughs) some help. So um, I know like for me, my upper body, it, it's a little slower and my delts I know have to come in bigger. Um, Even my coach, like we've kind of backed off doing arms just so that there's like a bigger, you know, size difference so that we can, you know, smoke and mirrors it a little bit. 
So. Okay, yeah, because I got to say, the one guest that I was going to tell you about, I was I asked her the same question, and she said, my calves, and she put her calf on the table, and it was like the biggest calf I've ever seen in my entire life. And I was, I was almost going to say, I was like, we're done here. We're done. This is this is BS. <laughs> But yeah, we we even had. I mean, there was a there was a PE teacher at my uh, high school too who had calves that were literally the size of everyone else's thighs. It was just, it was ridiculous. Where we were just, yeah, it was. I so that's why whenever I see people, and there's always those people in the gym too that are just genetically blessed too with either big calves or other body parts. Where you're just like, come on. But for me, I mean, it's back where I could I could train back, you know, once every six months, and it would still look like that's the only part of me that would ever look like I ever competed in a show is my back. Everything else in me, like you, if I were to turn around, then you're like, oh yeah, this guy doesn't, this guy doesn't compete, but yeah, back for some reason is just naturally gifted. But yeah, the, my entire leg section, I mean, being six, three, you're not going to get nice. You're not going to get big, strong legs. I mean, even though I was a pitcher, so yeah, leg day, I hate it, but it's definitely, it's definitely something that you have to do. So when you were getting started it, or how long into your journey, even after you graduated, how long before you finally decide like, Hey, I could do a bodybuilding show. Um, I watched the 2016 Olympia. So that one was the one where I realized that fitness was a thing. I was like, what is this category? Like, this is so fun. And then I decided to like, just basically the next day I was like, I'm going to do this. And so I did my first show in 2017. So yeah, I graduated in 2014. So it, it was a couple of years after that. That, that's awesome. So I always got to ask, you know, what is that first prep like for you? Because for a lot of people out there who don't know, just getting into shape to be able to go into a prep for a bodybuilding show is a hard enough work in and of itself when it comes to your dieting, your, your nutrition. But going into a prep is just notching everything up to an extreme level when it comes to, you know, you got to get all of your workouts in. You got to eat at the right times. You got to do an insane amount of cardio. What was that experience like for you? Um... Yeah, it was, it was totally new. I had been lifting, you know, a little bit for bodybuilding, but more just for like overall shape and health. And I would do my tricks sometimes just because that was a fun way for me to get some cardio in. But, you know, for my show, I was doing like real cardio and fasted cardio and like sprints and stuff that I haven't done since college. So it was really tough. The diet, I kind of tried a new diet that I didn't, it didn't work out. I won't do that again. But um, <laughs> I did the keto. It was like right before keto started to get really, really popular. And I had some good friends that were like doctors and researchers and they were into the keto thing. And they were like, well, will help you with your prep. And I was like, all right, cool. <laughs> and, and I just didn't like it at all. But the results were all right. And I just felt like I didn't come in like I should have but it was my first show and I I did good so mm -hmm. we'll get it all you know yeah and it's just it's all about <laughs> trial and error too that's what the all yeah. bodybuilding really is it's about finding those diets that work right for you it's about finding the training so yeah I mean it's for your first show I mean we've we've had two people on here that won their pro card you know on their first show and that's just you know an experience in and of itself but I always got to ask too when it comes down, you all you were talking about this a little bit earlier about how you know you thought that bodybuilding was you know sort of like a, a dog show for women. What sort of motivation or how what ways did you sort of convince yourself? Because I always say if you were to poll the general population, a very small singular percentage of people would be willing to you know walk up on stage in a bikini and pose for people. It's something that takes a lot of courage. Were there any sort of tricks and tips that you used mentally just to say like, okay, this is going to happen. This is something that I'm going to do. And was that ever just still a struggle for you? Because we have a lot of guests on here that end up saying, you know, like it gets to a point where I'm just like, you know what? I just work my butt off. So I'm just going to go up there and show it off. Yeah, I would agree. I think the second that I actually started practicing posing and understanding how hard it is, it was automatically just like, this isn't me just standing up there, like trying to look cute. This is like trying to breathe and like not break a sweat and, you know, not fall over and I, yeah, just as soon as I started practicing, I was like, wow, this is really hard. Like, you know, the physical, you know, tricks and um, skills, those things come naturally to me. And I thought posing was going to be not a big deal. <laughs> and that was definitely the hardest part. So that is one thing before I started this podcast that I had no idea of because that well, it leads me into my next question because for a lot of people, they don't realize that for most of these competitors, posing is the hardest thing. It's harder than their dieting. It's harder than their nutrition just because I always like to make the analogy of you can be a great driver. You can never be a perfect driver. You can be a great poser. 
Never can you be a perfect poser. It's something that's always ever evolving. It's something that you, that you always need to work on. Like you said, it was very tough for you going on, but was it something that you eventually, it's gotten easier for you? And what are some ways, I mean, I know it's a lot about muscle memory and just, you know, doing the movements so much that they're, they, they become second nature, but how has that evolved for you? The, the posing, I just, um, my fiance, my boyfriend at the time, he would just set a timer for me and he'd be like quarter turn to the right. And then we would just wait and I'd have to hold it. And <laughs> that was like, the most helpful thing for me is just because when I got into my show, it was never that long. So I got used to doing it for a long period of time and having to, you know, not readjust or anything like that. But since my first show, they actually took the posing out of the fitness for amateurs. So I haven't done it since then. And now going into my first pro show, I'm going to have to do not only just like the regular quarter turns, but I'm going to have to do like the T walk down the stage and everything. So yeah, it's been a journey trying to learn it all. Absolutely. And you know, I always got to say, you know, being a super pale individual myself, being from the upper, upper Midwest, you know, we're not going to get that much sunlight, especially days like today. But what is that experience like for you when you put that tan on? Because I've never been tan myself. I just get farmer's tan or I just get really, really burnt. (laughs) What is that feeling like for you? Because we have so many people that come on and just say, you know, like, you see all these muscles that you never even knew that you had. Everything really seems to pop out. What is that feeling like for you? Yeah. Um, yeah, you feel like pretty cool once the tan's <laughs> on. Yeah, it's like you kind of are waiting and like everything's going to come together. And then the tan is kind of just what makes it all come together. It's not super comfortable. I mean, you kind of feel like sticky, like, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, you don't want to like sleep on your sheets. You but... gotta, I, like I always say, you got to be like a statue, basically. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just one of those things that a lot of people don't realize goes into it because these competitors, I mean, what they put themselves through and the tanning in and of of itself is just unbelievable, just the processes that we've heard. But I always love to ask, probably my favorite question, this goes also for the bands that I have on and for the health and fitness people that I have on, is that, you know, for my bands, I always ask, what's it like, you know, going on live and performing in front of a crowd? And that's also the same thing for all the bodybuilders that we have on the show. What is that feeling like for you when you get to step on stage and show off, you know, all that hard work to everyone and just, you know, all those months upon months of just grinding away? What is that feeling like when you finally get to step on stage? Yeah, um... It makes it worth it for sure. It's like all the times that you are struggling, trying to get ready or thinking, you know, maybe this isn't good enough. Once you're there, it's like, this is what I'm bringing in. I'm just going to let it all hang out. I feel like the tinglies and (laughs) everything, you know, um, adrenaline for sure, which helps with the routine because you're already dieted down and feeling a little slow. So as soon as you walk out on the stage and, you know, hit your starting pose and, the music comes on and it just feels like this is why I'm here. Oh yeah. I mean, it's it's the same thing for me with like baseball, with being a pitcher that I just always got that feeling. And I always tell people that's one of those feelings that you just feel so alive and just find that one, that one thing that brings you that feeling in your life and everything will be fine. But what was it like winning your pro card? Cause for everyone out there, I mean, for bodybuilders, getting your pro card is one of the biggest things, if not the biggest thing that you can achieve, unless I mean, you win like the Arnold or you win the Olympia or anything like that, but getting your pro card, that's just an affirmation of all of the hard work that you've done as paid off. What was that feeling like for you? Yeah. Um, so it was, it was my third show, actually my first show, my regional show I won and was nationally qualified. And then I went to my first national show and they just did not like my routine. So there was one month until the next national show. And it was like, There was, there's only three that fitness girls can do. They don't have quite as many because there's not as many of us. So it was kind of all or nothing, get it together in a month or bust. And I changed everything. I changed my routine. I changed my music. I changed my costume. um, And I came in a month later and put it all out there. And, and I won and (laughs) it was totally worth it. It felt super, super good. It felt like I had earned it. Mm -hmm. And I had worked really hard and it paid off. 
That's awesome. And now you're actually the first, so you're going to be like a hundredth health and fitness guest. You're actually the first fitness pro that we've had on the show. Could you explain to the audience what, <laughs> what, what what's different about being a fitness pro as opposed to like the figure or physique or bikini girls or, you know, just the bodybuilding guys, what it's, what's different than that. And what you're, cause like you said, you mentioned a routine. What does that mean as opposed to, you know, just the traditional posing that we usually get for like the bikini girls where it's just, you know, doing, like you said, doing your core turns, but what, what's different about being a fitness pro? Sure. So it's actually the posing is the same as figure. So you do the same quarter turns and everything um, poses as figure does. And then there's a second round, which is actually two thirds of your score. And it's a routine round. So you can be up to two minutes to music. They look for strength, flexibility, just overall athleticism. And then there's like certain skills that you have to incorporate, like push ups, high kicks, splits, um, and other like strength holds and like a v hold and stuff i was gonna say that's why basically in every single one video that i've watched they always try to do at least a one-arm push-up basically is one of the things that's almost all yeah. of them always all the pros at least always do that's like that's like checklist check mark okay they've done that but yeah that's the one <laughs> thing that i remember from seeing a lot of those so yeah it's it's for a lot of people i mean these bodybuilders just the fitness people i mean it's a little bit harder because you got to do a routine and you got to have it mapped down perfectly and yeah i mean having people do push-ups when they're all dieted down like that that's just that just that's just torture in my opinion because the way that these competitors you know get all dieted down so yeah what they go through is just absolutely it's so it's just remarkable and it just shows you know the determination and the drive that they possess which is really just an amazing thing so that's why i mean i love to have you know guests like that on my show but now we get to some of the fun questions what is your go-to post-show meal Ooh, um, I usually like stuff with cheese. <laughs> um, it doesn't really matter, like pizza, mac and cheese, cheese. It's just blocks of cheese. Um, yeah. <laughs> hey, that's straightforward because, and that's the first person that we've actually ever said has had mac and cheese after the show. Normally, it's like burgers or pizza, but yeah, it's whatever, whatever <laughs> gets your goat with the cheese, I guess. But you know, but you know, I always love to ask. I mean, this is probably the most important question that I ask all my guests because it's never really talked about on Instagram, and it's really one of those things that people don't realize. I, I'll give an example. So I was at a New Year's Eve party, and one of my friends who watches this podcast came up to me and said, "You know, like, wow, you, I love your podcast, blah blah blah." I never knew that these bodybuilders that you have on their show, I thought that they just looked that way, you know, like 365 days out of the year, like their competition photos. I had no idea that, you know, they put on weight in the off season and all that stuff, which is why I love to bring it up because a lot of people don't realize that that look that you guys put on stage is not a sustainable look. It is the result of, you know, manipulating your body through all the diets and all of the hard work into a look that's not a sustainable and you are going to have to put on weight. I mean, there's some people that try to keep it on, but it's just, it's just very unhealthy and they, you know, 99.9% .9 of the time it doesn't work. There are, you know, like one or two genetic freaks that can just do that just because that's just, they're just freaky like that. But I always, <laughs> I always like to say, you know, it's never going to work out. But what has that experience been like for you? Because I mean, all of those hard months of just training your butt off to looking away and then realizing that, you know, hey, this look is not sustainable. Was that a struggle for you to sort of adjust to mentally? Because we have so many people that come on here that just, you know, get anxious and depressed, knowing that this is the best that I'm going to look for a, a decent amount of time. Was that ever a struggle for you? Um, my first show, I did pretty good. I did good coming out of it. Um, I stayed, you know, decent. And after I won my pro card, I, I messed up. I felt like I had a lot of size that I had to put on to be competitive as a pro and I did it the wrong way. So I'm kind of coming off of that. You know, I was eating not the best stuff and, but still like not enough calories. So it was basically the worst of both worlds. Um, I have to bring my metabolism and my calories back up and, and eat better all at the same time. So yeah, it's definitely a struggle. I think that it's kind of just mindset though, like knowing that you have a plan and not letting yourself get down about it is definitely a key. Oh, absolutely. It's, it's, it's all about the mental aspect. Most people don't realize the mental aspect is the toughest part for a lot of these competitors. It's not the physical because the, I mean, everybody can work out, but just the mental aspect of convincing yourself to keep going, keep going can be the hardest thing for a lot of these competitors. But I always love to ask, you know, one of the big things for me when I started putting on a lot of muscle and I started working out a lot in college is the one negative thing for me is that you're going to get asked to move a lot of people's furniture. You're going <laughs> you're, you're to get asked to open a lot of pickle jars or I'm still at home with my parents. So every time they come home with groceries, I basically have to lift the car into the driveway and lift out all the groceries. Has that been a similar experience with you where people see or people that know you know that you compete where they just assume that you can do favors like that for them? Um, 
Uh, sometimes, maybe in a different sense, because I'm a girl, yes. um, I don't get, you know, help me move this couch. But I do get, you know, like as a coach, like if someone needs a spot, they're going to come over to me instead of, you know, the girl. So the same size, but no muscle. So that definitely and jars and water bottles for sure. <laughs> it's it's a double edged sword for me because also being six foot three, I could be wearing, you know, ten layers of clothes on and people would still pick me just because they say like, oh, that guy's tall. He can come over and sure. help us. So, yeah, it's definitely something. I mean, it got to the point where, like, last summer, every other weekend, friends would be like, oh, hey, Ryan, you know, can you help me come over and move this couch or move this chair because I need to move out of my parents' house? And then, yeah, it just got to a point where I was – I've accepted it. You know, I do it with a smile on my face, but it got to a point – it was it was a struggle at first. But now probably my favorite question to ask – and, again, this is a multi-million dollar idea for anyone out there who's looking to make some money. But when it comes to clothes for fit women especially, I do a different thing for fit men. But for fit women, I mean, your clothing options can be very limited. I always like to say if you have big – shoulders you know dresses aren't your best friend jeans are another thing that we hear of all the time where you know if you because you usually got to have you know a big lower body and then a small skinny waist so it's one of those things where it's not going to work out so much but what are some ways that you sort of compensate for the fact that your clothing options can be limited um <laughs> I do a lot of like jeggings and leggings <laughs> yeah it's hard to find like the waist and the legs to fit in the same pants for sure I know like even when I was in high school I wanted this halter top homecoming dress and my mom was like oh baby like your traps are just too big like that doesn't really look good and I was like what you know (laughs) devastated like that was my first moment where I was like my body is not built for these fancy clothes so your your mom cuts to the core geez (laughs) scarred for life (laughs) <laughs> oh, yeah, that, that's that's awesome and like i always say you know i've had two fashion designers on the show and i kept telling them i was like for fit people you got to get on it it's one of those things but you know none of them have really gotten on it so far so we'll see we'll see how that goes but now you said that you kind of always want to help out people with your personal training but what has been the hardest thing for you when you've since becoming a personal trainer what's been the hardest thing for you to sort of adapt to in the personal training life um i feel like <laughs> I'm just like a really trusting, like full commit type of person. And like when other people don't do that for me, I'm just like, why? Like I just feel like I want to go home with all my clients and just make sure they're not, you know, messing up in the nutrition realm or like, you know, if I don't see them in the gym, like a couple times besides like our sessions, I'm like, where you been, you know? (laughs) So yeah, I think the hardest thing sometimes is like caring more than the client (laughs) oh yeah yeah well that's absolutely because yeah like you said like you're the one who's responsible for helping them get on that lifestyle or you know start to make those changes so yeah i i completely completely understand that and now what is the number one excuse that you normally hear from people who don't want to adapt or don't want to really get into that healthy and fit lifestyle i'm too busy is totally the number one thing. Like, oh, I don't have time right now or, you know, everything's going on in life. And I feel like life changes so often that you just have to make a priority of it and realize that your health determines how the rest of your life goes and, you know, what you can do for other people and what you can do for your kids and your family. You know, if you're not in your peak condition, you aren't as useful to them, you know, and not to, you know, it doesn't have to be like a selfish thing. Like really it helps everyone to help yourself. Yeah. And I always say, I mean, we've had guests on the show that are nurses that work 14 hour shifts and they're still able to, you know, find a way to work out. So it's all about just your time commitment. It's all about how much you want it. And I mean, everyone's always on the same 24 hours, unless you're like Dwayne, the rock Johnson, then I'm sorry. He must be on like 27 hours because how he's able to get those workouts in and make all these movies, you know, I have no idea, but yeah. So everyone other than him has the same 24 hours to work with. So yeah, it's just one of those things where I just say, you know, it's all about that drive and willpower. But now we get go to the audience favorite and my personal favorite part of the podcast, a little questionnaire where I'm going to ask Katerina here about a dozen or so questions that I ask all of my healthy and fit guests. And we're going to see how our answers stack up to everyone else. So for our first question, what is your go-to workout song at the moment? Oh, um, shoot. I feel like I can't tell you because <laughs> it's from my it's from my routine and I have not debuted it yet. All right. That's fine. So, what, is your, yeah, what is your I, second go-to workout song then? Yeah, let's think about that. Um, I like 
You know, I like anything by Missy Elliott. I feel like I just like, yes, girl, like, <laughs> let's go <laughs> as soon as she comes on. Yeah. That's awesome. I mean, I'm more of an old school sort of like 80s guy myself where I got to have my cheesy 80s music or like I'll play the Rocky Four soundtrack, the cheesiest soundtrack of all time <laughs> just to pump me up. Or, you know, I have my, you know, leg days. You got to get your heavy metal, like your Iron Maiden and Metallica just so that you're just so that you're able to get through it. But I have a problem. So I work out, you know, 75 percent of the time I work out at home because I have a nice gym sort of downstairs. But the times that I do go to a normal gym, I'm one of those people where I'll wait for the beat to drop. So let's say I'm doing like lat pull downs. I'll be sitting here like this for maybe like 30 seconds. And people will just be looking at me like, what's going on with this guy? I've had literally had people come up to me and be like, hey, are you all right? Did you hurt your back or something? I'm just like, oh, no, I'm just waiting for the beat to drop in my headphones. And then, <laughs> so, yeah, that's that I'm known throughout the gym that I go to as the guy that, you know, sometimes has to wait or feel like I'm doing squats. I might have to wait, you know, like 20 seconds once I'm already in the position just for the beat to drop. So, but it, it's totally worth it to get a good beat drop because it, it really, really, it sure really does help me. Oh, 100 percent. But now, yeah, I mean, it's it's totally true. But now for our second question, out of all the celebrities on the planet, if you could work out with any celebrity, who would it be? Oh, well, now that you mentioned The Rock, I feel mm-hmm. like that would be so cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that would be... That would, that would be Dwayne. awesome. Yeah, he's by far our most popular answer. But yeah, Dwayne The Rock Johnson, 100%. Totally. 100%. <laughs> but now, being a personal trainer, if you could train any celebrity on the planet, who would it be? Ooh, um, Britney Spears. <laughs> yep, that's a good one. Yep, she, she, she's up there with us. Yeah, she's up there in the in the ranking. She's got to be at least in the top five. Yeah, she would be amazing. But I, fitness. That's awesome. Oh, yeah, but here's the thing. If you're going to be a personal trainer, you have to – take her through a boxing session and say, hit me baby one more time. At least once, Oh my God. <laughs> at least once. That's the one thing. Whenever I hear that, I say, yeah, that's what I would do. I do. I'd be the guy that's like holding those punching things where she's punching. And I'd say, hit me baby one more time. Every single time she'd hit it. And then, yeah, I would, yeah, I would film. Yeah. It would be, it would be awesome. Or like if she was like doing exercise and then I accidentally forget to spot her, I just go, oops, I did it again or something like that. I would just, I would pun her so many times that it wouldn't even be, it, it wouldn't even be, you know, it would be ridiculous. But yeah, she would, she would definitely, definitely be a great one to do. But now uh, what is one item that you always need to have in your fridge? Um, I keep a pitcher in there um, and I have like the zero calorie crystal light Ooh. and that's kind of like my prep mm-hmm. juice. Um, <laughs> so yeah, it's like, oh, it's not water. It's like a trick. Um, <laughs> yeah. I feel like that's always, even, even if it's empty, like I still like put the empty thing back in there just so it's cold. So whenever I do make it again, so yeah. That's, that's awesome. (laughs) I mean, yeah, that's like the fourth or fifth time that we've heard water, but I've heard some really interesting answers on here. I mean, our normal answer is like chicken or eggs, but we've had, you know, I never realized until I started this podcast that for a lot of bodybuilders, mustard is a huge one too, just because it's zero calories, it's zero fat. So they just put it on their chicken just because it's, it's something to add to a flavor. But I always say, you know, if you have to put chicken on your or a mustard on your chicken, you might want to reevaluate your life and just say like, what am I, what am I doing with my life then? But yeah, <laughs> mustard is definitely one of those things that, that was really surprising, but yeah, water, water also. But now what is one thing that people who follow you on Instagram would be surprised to know about you if they met you in person? Oh, um, surprised. Um, I sing for my church, um, for my worship team. And no one really, like, I don't display that on Instagram or anything. I don't like sing for people just, yeah. (laughs) So it's kind of like a hidden talent. What is your favorite (laughs) church song to sing? Oh, um, I'm really into like Phil Wickham right now, all of his music. And, um, my favorite song I think is that Chris Tomlin song, um, I will follow. Oh, yep. yep. Yeah. That's yeah, a that's, good that's, one. That's, a, that's a pretty good one. So now that it was just the Christmas season, do you have to sing us? Do you have to sing a lot of Christmas songs? At yeah. Church? Now, what is yeah. your favorite? What's your favorite Christmas song you sing? Oh, um, shoot. I don't know. I love them all so much. I think, um, Oh, Holy Night's real beautiful. Yeah. I like that song. Um, but I also like all the upbeat ones and, you know, joy to the world. Yeah. Herald angels sing. Yeah. 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 Those are definitely great. But I mean, her, um, Oh, come all you faithful is probably my favorite, but yeah. yeah, it's, yeah, that's, that's, I mean, that's, that's my favorite part about going to church on Christmas is just all the singing. Normally I can't take the singing at church because I'm like, okay, 
wasting time here. It's like we could get this sermon done in about 20 minutes and then we get out of here. But during Christmas sermons, or I mean, during Christmas, you know, yeah, I, I could, I could be there for five hours and sing all the songs. Yeah. They, do, they do definitely, definitely have some. So yeah, that's great. That's something that I don't think a lot of people would know. But now what is one thing about the sport of bodybuilding that you would change if you have the all, if you had the all knowing power to do so? Hmm. Um, I, I would like, I, I just feel like my little baby fitness division just doesn't have very much, you know, like publicity. Um, even like they, they took out the posing thing in the amateur just to like help get it to be more popular. Um, but I do feel like, you know, in the bodybuilding cult, you know, people enjoy watching that, you know, Mm -hmm. it's just other people don't really know about it or to even get into it or that it's an option. It's not offered at very many shows. Um, so that's what I would change just for that to be kind of unequal level. Thank you for saying this, that yes, bodybuilding is for sure a cult. It's one of the good cults though, that I might say, I mean, like we can all admit, you know, CrossFit's a cult too, but there's some of the good positive, you know, healthy cults that you can, that you can definitely get into. But yeah, I honestly, yeah, like fitness, you're the first fitness pro that we've had on. So yeah, that just shows how much that division really needs. And again, if anyone's interested, I mean, I highly recommend going and looking it up, but now, I mean, so that's a really good thing. I never really, un- we never with bodybuilding, at least, you know, a lot of people don't realize with fitness, like you're the first guest that we've had on that's been a fitness pro. So I mean, if we can get that awareness out there and anyone who's interested in it, I highly recommend going and looking it up just because it is, you know, these routines that they do are, are pretty amazing. So I highly recommend, you know, giving them a watch and just, you know, showing their support because they do definitely need it. But now what was the last TV show that you binge watched? Um, okay. Me and Chuck, my fiance, we are obsessed with supernatural. Um, and we have Netflix, so we binge that pretty hard. Um, yeah, the new season comes out and it's like not even a month, maybe not even a week. And yeah. it's like, oh, we got to wait another year. <laughs> yeah, that's why, that's why, I mean, I love the shows where they release the entire season on the same day. But then the problem with that is that you're done in like one or two days of binging. And then you're like, oh, okay, that's pointless. But I have just gotten into Black Mirror, if you've ever seen that. Oh, no, they I just, haven't. Well, they just, it's on Netflix, so you can check it out. I mean, it's probably one of the top things that'll pop up because it just got promoted, but they just released a movie. It used to be a TV show, but now they just released a single movie where it's like a choose your own adventure. So you make choices in the movie. There's like two options that present themselves to you. And then you choose, and then depending on what happens, you know, like you can, you know, die or you can like do certain things. It's, oh, it's yeah. really, really amazing. And I'm <laughs> still into it. I mean, I've died probably about 10 times already. Like I died in the first two minutes because you can make a really dumb decision, but it's, <laughs> it's, yeah, it's, it's awesome. I'm going to, I'm definitely going to try it when I get home from work tonight, definitely going to see if I can, you know, complete the whole thing without dying. So, but it's, 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 it's very, very interesting. And I hope more movies do that just because it, it is really, really cool. But now what is your favorite TV show of all time? Oh, well, Supernatural is up there. Um, I love New Girl. Um... New Girl is one of my favorites. I'll have to admit it. I mean, I ne- I don't admit it to any of my guy <laughs> friends, but I, my brother introduced me to it. And yeah, I, I love New Girl. Yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I, I like was... silly shows sometimes. Yeah, because I was going to say like I have three of my really good friends that are girls are both teachers and they all act just like Jess. So then every time I meet, like I hung out with them for New Year's Eve and I was like, God, you guys remind me so much of her. It's ridiculous. So (laughs) yeah, it's so what I always get new girl flashbacks whenever I hang out with them. But now what is a guilty pleasure movie that you enjoy? Oh, shoot. Anything with Dwayne, the rock Johnson. Um, I like the other guys, even though he's in that first, like 10 minutes. Um, shoot. Yeah. That is my favorite like comedy Martin movie of all time. These two. That's my favorite yeah. comedy movie of all time. I mean, it's just, I mean, not that many people talk about it, but just all of the one liners that they have. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's ridiculous how funny that movie is 100%. But now for all of my guy friends, close your ears. Don't listen to this, but the princess bride is my guilty pleasure movie. I'll never admit um. it. Never admit it in front of my guy friends. See, I get that reaction every single time, but that is my ultimate date night movie. That is my ultimate, you know, I, I was typing my thesis paper in college and that came on and I stopped what I was doing and I watched it for the two hours. So that's just, that just shows dedication. It was on last I night. I totally have a guilty pleasure movie yeah. and yeah. it's um, the Moulin Rouge. Ooh. I watch that all the time. <laughs> 
Yep, yep. I know it's totally weird, but I love it. So. Hey, that, hey, that's that's a good movie. I mean, <laughs> Ewan McGregor. It's like, are you kidding me? He's a great. I love Ewan McGregor. So yeah, that's 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 awesome too. But yeah, Princess Bride for me again. All my guy friends, you can start listening now. But I'll never admit it in public. You can only hear me admit it on this podcast. But now going on to our few final questions. What is your favorite fashion trend of all time and least favorite fashion trend of all time? Mm, um, joggers are really in right now, and I like that. Um, <laughs> can wear like sweatpants as a style. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. Least favorite. Um, you know, I I don't know if it's like a least favorite, but like scarves that aren't practical. I just have never gotten into that. <laughs> I just feel like there's too much going on and I have a lot of hair and it's, I just, if, if it's not keeping my neck warm, I just don't bother. A- absolutely. And I mean, for me, flannel being up North, especially during the winter, I mean, you got to have flannel and I always got to put on, you know, every winter I put on, you know, about 15 to 20 pounds just so that I can, you know, survive during the winter. Because as if I were to be like in my leanest that I'm normally in during the summer, I mean, I'd get cold way too, way too easily. So now you got to put on that little bit of extra pounds. And now my least favorite, my dad rocked one in the late nineties and it scarred me forever, forever since, but fanny packs. <laughs> Let me though. So I'll make a point though. Girls can pull off fanny packs. I'm fine with that. But guys wearing fanny packs, it's like, come on, no. We went through that in the late '90s. It was a disaster. Hulk Hogan, I know, still rocks a fanny pack, but he's the one guy that I'll give a pass to just because it's Hulk Hogan. But other than that, it's like, guys, come on. You got, you got to know, you got to know the difference. But so yeah, that's definitely one of those things where I just, I just look at that and I'm like, ugh. But now I know it's recent. I know it's more recent than some of the guests we've had on. But if you could go back in time and talk to the 18 year old version of yourself, what would be the best piece of advice you would give her? Ooh, um, I would just say like wait, kind of hold out for the best. Um, I think that some of my earlier decisions I kind of just made and like settled a little bit and. and just where I'm at right now, I feel like I could have gotten here faster um, if I had just m- believed in myself a little more and, you know, thought that I was worth a little bit more. So believe me, I think that to myself all the time, too. I think to myself, if I had started this podcast, you know, two years earlier, imagine where I could be at right now. But, you know, like I said, like I'll like I'll say to you, too. I mean, it's like also be glad that you're also there at that moment, though, too, right now, because that's what I think, you know, when I talk when I get to talk to guests like you, I mean, I love doing it. And one of the reasons, you know, I tell all my guests this at, towards the end, but one of the reasons why I love having my guests on the show is, you know, first of all, I'm just, as you can tell, I'm a very talkative person. I love to hear other people's stories. I love to talk to other people. But also, I mean, for the female bodybuilders in particular, the male bodybuilders I love having on just because, you know, they give me a lot of good advice too. But for the female bodybuilders, I love having them on because I always like to say, you know, society-wise, if I were to see, or if a normal person was to see like a really muscular woman walking down the street, they just focus on the muscles. They're not able to see normally the person behind that. So I like to have our guests come on, you know, sort of share their stories because it, it, it makes people realize that there is a human being deep down underneath that person that they see walking on stage. They're, they're just a normal person just like everyone else. They may just work out a little bit more than you and they may look a little bit bigger and more muscular than you. But other than that, I mean, it's just like they're just a normal human being and I just love having people come on and share their stories. Thank you. Yeah, 100%. And again, you guys, Katie Vavolka, I mean, we highly recommend everyone. Go and follow her on Instagram. I'll leave her links down below. Is there anyone that you would like to give a shout out to before we wrap things up? Oh, um, well, all the glory to God, of course. You know, nothing would be this way without full faith in him. Um, and all my family and friends, everyone's been super supportive of me. 100%. And again, we'll go and follow her trainer, first of all, too, because that, that woman is jacked from seeing that from seeing some of her photos on Instagram. 100%. Yes. Go and follow her. Yeah, 100% too. So I'll leave all of those links down below. And again, you guys, Katie Vavolka, we cannot thank you enough for coming on the show. And we wish you nothing but the best. And when is your pro debut going to be? Do you have a date figured out or do you have any of that figured out? Um, yeah. It's going to be, um, we're leaning toward Toronto. Oh, okay. So um, it's going to be June 1st, I believe, <laughs> is that date. Oh, okay. Yeah. So everyone, June 1st, if you're in the Toronto area, go and check her out. And again, everyone, we recommend that you go and give her a follow and we wish you, Kate, Katarina, nothing but the best of luck. And again, you guys, this is Ryan Johnson, DD on the spot, signing out. Have a great day, everyone.